Um, we'll open the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Jorgensen, would you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor Sean Thomas, would you lead us in our invocation? Absolutely. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, I just thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord, breath in our lungs and be able to uh, come together today, God. I just pray that uh, this meeting be uh, pleasing and honor you, Lord. Uh, God, we just uh, pray for today our teachers and our students, God, that you put a hedge of protection around them, dear God, that, uh, dear God, that it be productive, Lord, productive for you and productive, uh, dear God, for what you would have us to be doing, Lord. Dear God, I just uh, ask you to lead, guide, and direct in the decisions that will be made, Lord. And dear God, may we always seek you first and always say and all we do, yes. dear God, and we are just so grateful. We want to uh, give you praise and honor and glory for it all. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we'll start um, with a presentation by Mr. Joe Theobald. You'll come up. I asked Mr. Thebold to come up or to present today. Um, just a quick background. Uh, going back to Hurricane Irma, we we did a presentation last meeting, and uh, since then I've talked to Mr. Thebold. We've had some heroes that have come out of the storm, and we definitely want to recognize not only our school personnel but our community people too. So thank you, Mr. Thebold, and look forward to your presentation. Thank you, and thank you, board members, for having us. Uh, I wanted to write down a few things, so I hope you don't mind me reading. Uh, this time, I'd like to call up the following people to recognize them for their efforts during Hurricane Irma. Uh, Rogelio Baltazar, Frank Schreffler, Francisco Baltazar, Alfre Alfredo Ramirez, mm -hmm. Gerardo Olguin, Martin Olguin, Gerardo Bueno, Salome Gonzalez, Teofilo Nunez, Silvestre Nunez, and Roberto Gomez. I uh, also brought some staff members with us, uh, and you can see Sulema Arroyo and Oscar Jaimes, uh, who served about 48 straight hours in our shelters um, as, uh, as interpreters, and Donna Taylor's here as well, our executive secretary. Um, so we sheltered around 600 people during Hurricane Irma. These were um, the whole community, young families, retirees, families of staff members, all together we were hoping our homes would be safe. By 11 o'clock the rain had created a, a river that was running from the west end of our campus to the east end of our campus. Uh, it was about 10 inches deep and it was coming over the sandbags that we had. Um, the custodial sc staff went scrambling, did a great job, but um, they grabbed every mop they could find and the brooms and our automated a uh, mop that's uh, gas powered and we were doing everything we could to take up as much water as we possibly could. Um, so I went outside into the river uh, to try to, to fix our sandbags to try to get them a little bit taller so that they weren't coming under the, uh, the doors and through the hallway. We actually had it running all the way through the hallway and brooming it across out to the parking lot. Uh, and when I got out there, uh, I saw these men and a few others standing with cell phone lights on because we had no electricity. Um, one of them had a shovel. Somebody else had a, a, a bunch of our garbage bags, and most of them were, had their bare hands, and they were digging uh, sand into these trash bags. Um, not only did they stem the flow into the classrooms with these trash bags, they built a, a little dike. And, uh, and a ditch that reverted the water around. I mean, not only did they solve the problem, but they created kind of a nice space for us to walk completely dry from our, uh, our command center in the front office all the way into the shelter. Um, they did this without anyone asking, without anyone telling. Uh, they did it just because it was a problem that needed solving, and they solved it much more quickly than I would have ever thought of doing it. Uh, and they did it all with a smile on their face and laughing uh, through the, the wind <laughs> blowing down trees and uh, branches coming down. Um, and all of this uh, was greatly appreciated. Uh, I can't tell you how much it just uh, it made the whole experience worthwhile for me and for others who witnessed it. And uh, everybody came out safe. Our classrooms took a little bit of water, but by the time uh, we got done, 
I got done watching the sandbags being dug and uh, these gentlemen got done <laughs> saving the school. Um, many of their family members had mopped up the water that was on the floors in the classrooms with their spare clothes. Awesome. Uh, and so this is a, a wonderful thing just to show how much school is. It is teachers, it is students, but it's a community. And, um, and these gentlemen mean a lot to us down in South Putnam. So thank you, fellas. And thank I you. have this. James, Miss Crawford is going to get in the picture as well. Thank you. There are no I'm going to do what? In the picture with them. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. There are no. Rick, y'all get a picture. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. What a blessing. We need their number for the next one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I bet they'll be there. Stay there, James. I can get your picture. Squeeze in a bit. We need to double up and just get received any public comment cards well except from one but we're gonna not we're gonna bypass that one <laughs> so um, on to the consent agenda miss Jorgensen is there anything you'd like to pull yes ma'am um, h1 and j2 h1 and j2 question and I better get organized I guess I'm sorry J2 I got it. J2 okay. wouldn't that be during board um, that's an emergency oh that's emergency sorry let me just pull uh, H1 then okay Miss Cummings um, D4 I'm fine I came by yesterday you are no, uh, Mr. Bowling took care of my question. Okay, and um, I have nothing to pull. Madam Chair, I <coughs> ask that we make a motion to approve the consent agenda minus D4 and H1. Second. second. Oh, you got a second from Ms. Gill. There you go. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, we'll look at D4 first. Yeah, I just, um, this is about the calendar, and I did talk to the um, union president a little bit because I know that when the board appoints a committee, it sometimes evolves into something different and may evolve back, and I feel confident that the current committee is more representation of our employees because at one time it was only a few people, and that's kind of why I wanted to know if we could maybe have a list of who's on that committee because when we have to answer the questions when we make these changes it's um, based upon a committee and so when the board appoints a committee it, like I said at one point it involved to only a few people and um, and now according to um, the union rep that we do have some you know employees on it too but again I want to feel confident that when I, I've already got a lot of complaints is when they say, hey, I'm really not happy with this calendar, I want to lead them, hey, these are the people on your committee that you can maybe um, direct your questions to because they're employees and um, district staff and teachers and whoever's on this committee to make the calendar. So um, there's no longer a representative from each school no. on the calendar committee? No. and Same I kind the insurance. Correct. So these things that have evolved and the board's not really aware of, I feel it's important that if it's our – you know, if, if we're negotiating and we want to change it, now's the time to do it. Um, again, I just don't like 
not knowing and then people call me and I'm like oh I have to look into who's on this committee I don't have a clue it used to be one from every district or every school, school site and then it was just a few district staff and now it may be 12 or 13 so I just like it to be a little more maybe in concrete that we would and that we know who they are it. Correct. Need yeah. MOU I, couldn't or carry, I couldn't carry around a concrete, Nikki. Maybe just in writing. So, babe, basically, and again, I'm not approving the calendar. I didn't approve it the first time because we go to school until December 23rd, and I wholeheartedly don't agree in that um, with that at all. But again, that's a com committee decision. Um, this this revision does take the day before Thanksgiving. Um, because of a hurricane day and again I don't agree with that I feel that we're had a planning day in January we could have taken um, this was a committee I thing see. so, so I, what, now what are you proposing instead of the day before Thanksgiving well that would mean the committee would have to it's I know, all but we're but we're taking the day in January there's two days we go back on Tuesday and the first day is in-service day and again it could be negotiated and all the nonsense with the um, paperwork that's involved with that but again I don't agree with taking the day before Thanksgiving at all but I didn't vote for this calendar in the first place because we go to school until December 23rd and I don't agree with that so I'm not voting for it but in the big picture I want the committee um, documented so is there a, a representative here from the committee from the calendar. See, that's it. This board doesn't have any idea. Yeah, we don't even know who's on it. I've been on, this is the end of my th third term. I have no clue about insurance committee, calendar committee, nothing. And this board needs to clarify what board committees we have. Right, and that's and then, and how they're chosen. And then something in writing, concrete, right. like Nikki said. Concrete. <laughs> Concrete. So there's no one out there on the calendar committee. I think the superintendent heard us loud and clear. Mark, are you on it? Are you? Okay, you want? Okay, yeah. And I, I mean, I knew that Debbie was on it again. I just don't. I didn't agree with it in the first place. I'm not going to approve it now. But I do want the committee more finalized. I want the minutes, public meeting. It should be all yes. laid out, and it's yes. it's all. Oh, here's a com approve it, and we don't even know who's on the committee, so that yeah. bothers me. Right, and I, I would like to make sure there's some follow up on this request. I agree but, from Ms. Cummings. But I think as as it stands now, we should leave it as it is because the superintendent has sent out a message, and parents have have seen that message. Right. Yeah, and before so, we voted but on it. But like you say, before in the future, <laughs> in the future. But but I'm thinking because he's already designated our three makeup days and explain to them that the that the uh, DOE Tallahassee has already taken well, away two of them. I hear Ms. Cummings saying she's wanting a little more uh, contact or uh, understanding on who's the committee yes. so she yeah. can she can ask questions of the committee. Well, all of us. Well, yeah. even for the board. Right. right. If we want to reconfigure it, then it's our position to do it. Exactly. Now's the it's time just to a do it through. recommendation from the committee. The board makes the ultimate yeah. decision. Well, Kathy, I, uh, Kathy and Nikki are right in the sense that we need to know, and we need to be aware of who the committee members are. I had to find out yesterday exactly who the insurance committee members were, but that's I could have found that out had I have availed myself and asked a question. I didn't do it but in the future i think it would be nice to know but i will be supporting the recommendation i'm just thankful we don't have dead children that we and we can worry about this and not have to worry about who's got inconvenience during a holiday so this deck bells is here to answer questions i think from the chair uh, the calendar committee yes ma'am or yes sir i would just like to address we do have a calendar committee that has been in place it's representative of management as well as from the union we also did send out a survey monkey to employees for their feedback on the options that the committee had developed. And that information was used in presenting the calendar that you have before you before we had to make the changes with the hurricane. But that was used before we presented it to you as a board. Right. But again, I complained about that because there was two choices and there was only one day difference. So I wasn't I okay with that survey monkey in the first place. Um, I don't feel that it was very... Um, open and upfront for all employees to have their I know like, I don't like comparing to other counties but st. John's County they have a 
place to put comments and what they appreciate and what they don't appreciate. And they actually sent it out to parents, staff, employees. So it was kind of nice. I just want more input rather than a small group of people making decisions for 11,000 students. Is there, is there a uh, board member that's designated to be like an ex officio on that calendar committee? No, no. Nope. I hope I'm not. <laughs> well, I would say uh, next I'm year. They want to appoint a board member to be there I like agree the with other that. committee. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's a good idea. idea. Yeah. Or at least one of our representatives. Or and maybe if we see the committee we could be more um, proactive and well, let's put we it maybe it could be written in, in as what the, the chair committee is and then it'll say a board representative. Yeah, Kathy's right. The chair. We need to well, put it, it on the agenda have at some to be point. The chair. And, and, and go but I mean I'm then we won't have to might, worry. Might be a good idea for a workshop on board committees, you know, at some point. But if, if now's the time to do all the bargaining and negotiating, to go bye -bye. it now might be, the time. Yes. now would be the time to yeah. maybe well, bring Yeah, that's what I would say. Executive get session it. today. Are we? Okay. We're having executive session after the meeting, so. Okay. All right. So. Be quiet before we get your thumbs down again. All right. So, Ben, we need a motion for the vote. I make a motion that we accept the, the uh, superintendent's recommendation to uh, make up the hurricane days as noticed second oh. all in favor aye. aye opposed aye motion passes okay so now we need to look at h1 i'll tell you my question debbie probably has to come back well, well miss whitehurst is not here if you have a question um maybe mr debbie. boeing or um who's prepared to answer questions on the personal matters miss whitehurst I'll go ahead and ask the question. Maybe you can answer. Yeah, go ahead. We Out can. of field teachers, every year we approve a list, and I know the parents have to be notified. Are we working on? It seems like an awful long list to me every year, and I've never brought it up. Do we work on getting them in? Are they taking courses? What is the yes. statute Most of it's say yes. about yeah. out of yes. field teachers? Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, Laura can address You're everywhere. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do. We use our Title II funds to help people get in, in their field. Sort of, yes, ma'am. Okay. And a lot of times they may be out of field for just one course. Got it. So it might well, not be their student. whole day by one student. Yes, ma'am. But we have to let <sighs> everybody know. One student. Yeah, yeah. If, if I'll I be out of field a couple of times. If I have an ESOL student and I do not have my ESOL certification, even if it's only one student in my class that's well, ESOL, that's then I'm out of field. Then you're out of field. Yes, yeah. And we have ways Wonderful to help people get those things. We together. have some bunch of legislators up there in yeah. Tallahassee. And I will I really say that, and that, would, that would make sure sense because most of Thank you very in, much, Laura. So that would be the... Yeah. I feel a lot better. I'll make a motion to approve personnel matters. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, where's Tony? You're late. <laughs> Yeah. I know. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna That's tell you. I'm not gonna up. keep you after school. Um, but no, don't come up yet. Don't oh. come up yet. I'm Sorry, gonna. I told him. What I know. Whatever you have, we'll we can address it when we talk about insurance. How's that? Yes, can you stay? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. You got some good, beautiful good girls job. with him. I thought there. Okay. Um, let me so turn the under, page. I thought it was under emergency. Yes, yeah, she wants you to read from the agenda, not from this. This is my uh, agenda. So I know. I'm just telling you. She don't want me to read from my agenda? From this, no. From this, not this. Oh, uh, don't look at this? Right. Okay. So do emergency first. I'm sorry. I thought that was part of emergency. So go no, emergency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, now we're going to go out of regular session into emergency session. To take action on the items. Uh, the first item is. Did I scare you? No. Okay. Uh, the 2017 2018 personnel allocations, change number 8.17, justification, explanation, time sensitive. I make a motion we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. The second thing is a memorandum of understanding about the Putnam County Foster Grandparent Program. Justification, explanation, time sensitive. So moved. Second. All in favor? No, uh, I am quite, that's uh, one, the one I pulled. Yeah. Oh, that's right, that's right. I just have, I'm sorry. We never had this before, correct? Because mm -hmm. communities and schools 
Xander Hartley. I don't. Okay, let me. Like I'll, just because I've been involved for about a year with Lisa, and she's the one who's doing it now. But okay. when communities and schools dissolved and the foster grandparent program went away, see, when we had communities and schools MOU, it included right. hippie and foster. So in order to keep that grant, Lisa, who is an amazing superstar, made it stay. And I tried to push her along whatever I could because I didn't want to lose the grandmas. But uh, she's under communities and schools of Florida now and yeah. got the grant. She wrote the grant without being paid. Talk about, I'm not even, yeah, she's amazing. So she's been since June, got it approved, working under communities and schools of Florida. Okay. In our district, got the money, and now finally we get our foster grandparent program back, wonderful. which is amazing. Wonderful, I want to give you a clap, wonderful. though. Thank you, Lisa. Absolutely, and please do ask. I mean, as far as myself, my but I think the board is supportive. As far as if you need extra of copy paper or a, you know, any kind of little thing that holds you up, because she's not a big thing. Ask. Yeah, yeah, please ask. Don't just assume you'll will. I mean, we're here to help you. Whether it's we got our office, I know we got our. Um, oh, absolutely. Whatever else. Yeah, we we've worked that out some office space for. Yeah, you. thank you, Lisa. Awesome. Oh, good. Wonderful. Good. Well, we've got a motion okay, on the floor. I just have, oh, there's already motion on the floor. Yeah. Thank you. I just have a couple more. I was ready to call for the question, but go ahead if you've got more. You can't call for the question, only the chair can. I can't. Well, I, all, I don't know, but anyway. I won't argue. Go I, can ahead. I ask my other two yes, questions? Go ahead. Thank you. First of all, I think that Jane needs to sign this as board chair for it to be legal and that there's no if out or sign. It's not the sign. It's not on the sheet. It's on the have. one okay, I signed. on the new one. I think okay. I've already signed it. And also the termination of MOU, it can be terminated at any time by either party and I think 30 days notice should be in there. There's no notice. So we could call up and say, we're done tomorrow, according to this. So I would like to um, approve it, but to put in this MOU may be terminated at any time by either party by sending written notice of termination of the MOU to the other party. 30 days written notice. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. Most of them do say yes. yes. They get, so is that, could you amend your motion to include that change, please? Is that all right with you? Did she make the motion or did I make the motion? You made the motion. Oh, wait, I, I, he said it. Charlie, can you give me a corrective language to make that yeah, motion? Say, um, 30 days notice for either side to go. All right, I would like to make an addendum of 30 days notice. Uh, if if we decide to terminate or either party oh, no, no, no. Right. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, we'll go out of emergency session into regular session. And next on our list is um, discussion and input of our revised policy, volume 17, number two of bullying and harassment. Does anyone have I any like questions? It. Good. No, I like it. That's good. I did too. It's great. Thanks for you changing did, it, you Travis. Did good, good Travis. job. Yep. You're earning your dime. For a change. Make a motion. We pass it. Second. All in favor? Wait, we wait. advertise. Oh. We, we've got to. We have to advertise. We've got to make a motion. We, do, we, don't, we don't even need a motion. Just advertise. Advertise. <laughs> Everybody. You call Are we doing a roll call? No, she just no, said just okay. discussion. Okay. It. I can hear. This just has to be discussed at a board meeting at this point for statute. We have okay. to have public input. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody got anything to say? <laughs> well, the one change that I noticed was to include the bullying um, on the buses. On bus stops, yeah, which is and amazing. And that's huge and it how it affects people's educational um, experience even if it's in the classroom I've had several kids well, I know that go to school if correct you get on the bus if yeah so thank you Travis for being so insightful and proactive and proactive oh. and wise you're cute we thank wow. you and darling, <laughs> but a pain. all right language. okay <laughs> before we get too overboard here yeah. um, before our next recommend uh, before our next item uh, Dr. Cerency would like to make a statement please 
Okay, you have before you the recommendation from the insurance committee regarding um, you know our carrier and what I'd like to do is just um, and again I want to thank all the insurance committee members for all the time they put in and um, you know a lot of uh, presentations a lot of discussion and I attended some of those meetings and uh, thank you for the time you put in we certainly appreciate it I do want to uh, read a statement to you just to clarify uh, some information that was presented to the insurance committee and before you make a decision today I just want to make sure you have this to consider and again I'm this is strictly informational so bear with me for just a minute our current renewal with United Healthcare is 18.5 percent increase uh, if we utilize avail service who you heard from today the renewal rate would drop to 15.5 percent increase on the PPO plan at a 15.5 percent increase for the employee who has employee only coverage this is an increased cost of $112.68 per month or $1,126.82 per year. If the board's contribution remains the same, the employee would go from paying $276.98 per month to $389.68 per month. Employee this, only. Yes. This is a 40.68% increase cost to the employee. 40.68 percent we have 664 employees with this coverage level God. on the HSA plan at a 15.5 percent increase for the employee who has employee only coverage this is an increased cost of $89.23 per month or $892.30 per year again if the board's contribution remains the same the employee will go from paying $125.68 per month to $214.91 per month. What was that month. one for? I'm sorry. This is the HSA. Okay. Say those figures again. $125.68 per month currently that would increase to $214.91 per month. This is a 71% increase we have 320 employees with this level of coverage there there are varying rate increases for other groups employee children employee spouse family retirees and so on and they are well above the 15.5 percent increase avail should be able to offer all, us alternatives to our current plans which would lower our renewal rates if we get to a single digit rate increase say 9.9 percent the employee only on the PPO plan will see a 25.98% rate increase, which is 71.97 or $72 per month increase. And the employee only on the HSA, HSA plan at a 9.9% increase will see a rate, a rate increase of 45.35% or $56.99 per month. No matter what our rate increase ends up being, if the board is not increasing their level, their contribution level, the employee has to absorb the entire increase. So I think it's, I just want, I feel it's, I'm obligated to make sure you're aware of those numbers. Um, you know, we're all advocating on the side of our employees and what's best for our employees. Yes. But the percentage increase is borne by employees only as long as we are contributing a flat amount from the board Can so I, madam chairman that's i just want to present that to I you i appreciate you that. Entertain I, that and i have a question because i am yeah i hate to say it but i'm confused if it's a 18.5 percent increase then it's a 45 percent increase i don't how do we get from 18.5 percent increase on the rate and then but it's going to cost the Ron. i've asked ron to kind of Can help us with the numbers I'm, yeah I'm just I, I do We've also it's got because it. the in, the the percent increase and i'm going with 15.5 i didn't that's fine i didn't put 18.5 in front of me because they said 15.5 if we go with the veil and avail um, had a presentation to you today it's a 15.5 percent increase on the whole rate so when we're not increasing unless the board decides to increase your 
uh, contribution by 15.5 percent. So it comes 31 percent to them. Exactly. More. And I've done it at different right, rates and everything, and it's always what I present to the insurance committee when got we're given it. a percentage rate increase. Unless the board contributes more, the employee and absorbs the entire we cost. Have to do under yes, this, in and this is even, session. and this is even if our our, our bus drivers, our that's whomever, everybody, whoever that's has anybody. our insurance, whoever has and our that insurance increases passed on mm -hmm. to them. And all we know for certain right now, yes, if we go with the veil, we will decrease from 18.5% to 15.5%. And then we're going to have a meeting next week where they're going to bring things to us to try to lower it more, right. uh, to do tweaks to our plans and everything like that. But I went with the 15.5 because that's all we know right now. Okay. 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 Thank you. Tony. Thank you, Ron. Mm -hmm. State your name, your address. And Tony Peperowski, 120 Roberts Court, Palatka, Florida. You know where that's at? Neighbor. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my question was, was uh, the uh, insurance committee, and not trying to take anything from them because I've actually been able to sit in on a few of their meetings, and I understand that it's, it's tough. It's like looking at a jigsaw puzzle and trying to figure out which way to, to start. But uh, as of right now, my question, it's, it's my understanding that they voted five to two to not put it out to bid. Is that correct? No. Yeah, that's yes. right. Yeah. What we heard. Okay. Uh, five to not put it out to bid, two to put it back out to bid. Well, I guess my question is what is their rationale to not put it back out to bid? And that was the whole three years ago, and I know it was three years ago because it was just after my second child was born that they had voted to, to go and put it out to bid. And at this point in time, now, that back then we could afford the family plan and it was actually cheaper for us to go from individual policies for my kids and uh, along with the individual policies offered to employees uh, but at this point in time I'm, we're paying 861 dollars per month for a family plan and uh, Dr. Cernancy, I, I really have a hard time calling you doctor because I only know you as Coach Cernancy. But I've been called everything. I most certainly appreciate the fact that you've brought this before the board on behalf of the employees because I, that's just whenever you have a family that both incomes come from the Putnam County School District, there's nowhere to go for insurance right. unless you go and you get individual policies through uh, an open enrollment through any other through any other agency and it's uh it, it's gonna it's it's squeezing everybody and it's not just it's not just families it's no different and I mean, we're on plan d on top of that right. we're not even on plan c uh, so more or less the tonsils that were taken out for both of my kids last february that i will pay off of my tax return this year well if my insurance goes oh, up that it's just pretty much gonna be null and void so my only request is is that this this is how the the conversation was started three years ago to keep this thing out the bid i don't care who it is but the the price needs to be in the best interest of the employees and that's the whole point and i believe that uh terry wright had actually said that that he recommended that it go out to bid either i don't know every year or every two years and i understand from a standpoint that that's a lot of change everybody's had everybody now is getting into the routine of dealing with united health care and and whatnot you know you go from blue cross blue shield to united health care well it this can't be a matter of convenience it's got to be a matter of you know money right, yeah. real money for people that are struggling with insurance I mean, at this point, at that kind of rate increase, my insurance premium per month will be the same as my mortgage payment. So that that's a real that's a real reality for a lot of uh, a lot of employees or some employees that may you know just be on a single income. So I'm just asking. I, I guess I have not had a chance to talk to Paul Smith. He was gone today before I could get any information from him. I just wanted to my like I said my my biggest question was why was it voted to not go back out to bid. So thank you for your time and thank you for your thank work. Thank you, Tony, for coming out. I don't you. have that information. Can, can I? Let me think I can explain it as I understand it, not being an insurance agent, but having had our broker explain it to me. When you go out to bid, there are basically two companies in Florida, United 
and Blue Cross Blue Shield. There's another one yeah, that no. didn't respond to our bid. But it's here. But it's in Florida, okay? So basically, we're between one of three. And when we went out on bid for a broker, we chose whatever the name of the company is. Sorry, Danny. But um, Alexander, I think. What was it? And Alexander and Company to be our broker to get us the best rates. Now, if we were to go out on bid again this year and switch, we would be stuck with that new broker slash Blue Cross whatever literally forever because if we went out on bid again, nobody would touch us. You can't jump insurance companies like that because you get, you'll be stuck with Blue Cross forever. If we go out on bid and go back to Blue Cross, we will, nobody will bid on us again. I will. Well, well, then they go up every year up to year, and what do you do? Well, what are we doing now? Well, let, let me. We have veil. That's can, what we're can, doing. I, can I say something? Yes, Jenny? you may. I, I know, I, I came, I guess the governor appointed me to the board, and, and when I got on, I, I remember Tony being one of the first people that came up and talked about this when we were going through that ordeal. And it boils down to me to, I listened to the presentation today, and it was fabulous. I, I will say that Avid did a tremendous job. Avid? Yeah, well, Avail. 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 I, I'm thinking of the other, the, the instructional program. Um, they did a tremendous job, I, I thought, but it, it boils down to me to two things. And I told the gentleman there today, it's the cost for the employee. Yes. It's the yep. cost for the employee. It's the cost it's for, for the, the employee. employee. It's that's what really matters. And it and number two, we have to work in is the wellness. I, uh, I, I hate to say it, but I, in my experience with doing what where it's sitting, where Dr. Cerency is. Anytime I saw a double-digit increase, it meant there was money on the table. And I think that either, and this is just my personal speculation from past experience, either our group needs to get their health care cost in line or, uh, you know, or I'm for today putting it out to bid and letting the chips fall where they may and letting, and letting the... Uh, the United folks come and talk to Mr. Cerency and his committee and address them. If they can't get their pencil sharp, then uh, let's let's just see who can and get this situation under control. There's money on the table. Um, and, and not, make it competitive. Make it yeah. competitive. I just yeah. feel that. Yeah, way. and our did. Well, and I, and I don't know that I agree with what you were told about never being bid for again. I, I, I look at that as like a threat almost. What? I mean, years down the road, who's going to say who would bid? Who's going to say who's going to be one of the three big insurance companies in Putnam County? And I love the people involved that I know personally. I, it's not about Me that. Too. It's about people Bottom like Bottom line, Tony it's the about kids. the employees in Putnam County, and there are a lot of Tony Paproskis in Putnam County yeah. that can barely afford right. to. <clears throat> and Can I ask just why this wasn't done at 235 <laughs> in our insurance workshop? Because yeah. nobody yeah. even. Why didn't you ask questions? It was on the agenda to talk. It, they to answered you. every question I had. Well, you didn't. It ask was them. about the. It was you about a veil. Like going out on bid. No. Why? And, and that's and not and what the, that was about. Of course it was. It, Mr. Attorney, do we I need a motion or do we just need a, wow. a consensus to oh, put it out? So you let us talk. You listen. We may You're end real. up. We may end up with this same company. Yeah. Uh, they will compete and it's may so lower the rates for. For them, but right now we're at right. their mercy. Well, we would encourage them to bid. Yes, absolutely. Because we're looking out and, and, for our employees. You guys, I, I am. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you. you again. We yes. asked Danny to leave. We didn't have any more questions. We had right. adjourned at two thirty-five. We told our broker, "Thank you for After your presentation. We have no other questions." And then you're going to come to this meeting after we say. So I thought that meeting was about a veil no. and what they could do for us. Well, it we, was about yeah, the it was about a veil. It was about the insurance. A veil will only go if we continue with United. And we did you not understand what he said? He works for United, and he will I only what he go said. if the a veil United hires them. And so you're asking everything that we just understood in that workshop and you have a committee that said 
five to two. This is in the best interest. They've been hours and hours and hours in committee but then, meetings. But then why is it on our agenda under L uh, discussion of unfinished business number two recommendation for insurance because committee was, for 2018 our discussion input and action on going to bid well why have it here if we're not Sandy, going to do that Sandy, help did you me read understand the letter? but it's on there you don't have to did vote you yes read the letter from Rhonda that said the insurance committee recommends to stay with United and hire a veil it was voted with the committee. Did but you what, not read but, the no. letter? But I, I don't have to agree with the board has final say. The board yeah, has we have we don't say. Have and have to. we ever not gone with oh a, God, a yes. committee? Yes, we have. You guys, wow. Do what, Rhonda? We did. We're tired. Yes. I'd like to make a motion if that's what we need uh, <laughs> that we put this we out to bid and let the superintendent negotiate with whoever comes forward with his staff and see if. If in the interim they can come up with a much more preferable rate, and, and Second. that. Second. And I'm going to go on record as saying this is a disaster, and two years from now, let's see what our rate is. Two yes. years. Second, Second, Sandy. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Unbelievable. And it's political, besides. Well, you can think whatever you want to think, Kathy. No, but I we've said done it. our I'm thinking it. I said we've it. done whatever you say. We've done our research. Wow. But when I hear an employee comes and 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 share with us That's what it's about. The, how he's working hard by district, performing his job, and he's almost having to choose between a mortgage and medical care for his children, and he didn't even mention to eat. So it ends up being paying the mortgage, paying the insurance, and not eating. Those are proposed. We have proposed rates. We haven't got our rates yet. That's the absolute most it would have been was fifteen point well, five without planning. Everybody's plan paying changes. high health insurance. You like, cannot make not those decisions well, based upon that. It's kind of like we that had. Absolutely. It's kind of like we salaries. had with the gentleman with the Camel building that wanted steps. to negotiate. Either, either tell us what you can do to help our employees. Or come back There's with something that's more realistic. An insurance increase. And I look forward to seeing what the superintendent can come up with. And unless we're willing as a board to increase what we put in that's for true. them, it's gonna and, and where are we gonna get yeah. the money from yeah. to increase our share of what we give we to them? We get money for whatever we want all the time it happens. So if we wanted it we could find the money. And you make sure that you put that in the paper because this is absolutely 100% political because I've is. sat through hours and hours and I know what's in the best interest of these employees and this is not. 89% medical loss ratio. 89%. You, you understand me? You. And we renewed it through at 72% and 22 percent increase you are making a huge mistake for yes, us you are. You are. huge and mistake, huge that. mistake. And, hey, I'm, and i tell you what i'm willing to say after we have tried it and if it did not work late. i'm it willing to late. come back and say i late. made a mistake i'll learn from my Why mistake but when i hear an employee yep. stand up and say hours of the meeting you will yeah, not that's get enough that's enough the mistake that's enough made. Nikki. too late enough okay we'll start with board reports david do you have anything you'd like to report uh, i was just really blown away when joe brought the gentleman up and, and the people up that helped and that's just a microcosm of folks that helped step up and fortunately we didn't have a, a loss of life during the hurricane and i still can't and for those of you that live in flood zones like i do it's still tough uh, with the fluctuation of the tide in Northeaster, and I think Highway 20 was blocked the other day trying to get buses down. Highway 100 was blocked. 100 was yeah. blocked. Yeah. So, you know, it's a nobody really knows what it's like to to really have to do what our folks do, and I, I just can't say enough good things about our faculties and staff. Yeah. And that's that's it for me. Sandy, uh, mine is real quick. Uh, just kudos to Interlock and High School on their parade and and to the board and to our superintendent for showing our support of the schools. And we plan to continue to do this to be in each of the parades. Uh, Crescent City, they're celebrating homecoming this week, but they will not have a parade right. based on the fact that they had the makeup days. Uh, but I, I just thought it was a great show to our community that we may not get it right all the time, but we're willing to do what we can to support 
our parents, our students, our schools, and administrators. I believe Crescent That's City um, has a pregame celebration yes, at 6, yes. I believe. Yes, but probably I'll, got that email. I'll be at the pot, Powder Puff, uh, Palaka High. Right. I'll be at Crescent City. I'll be City. commentating. I'll, I'll give the, him your regards. Powder Puff. You, okay. You, you need to talk about the game a little more. You, you. Well, I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. She does okay. a great job. Okay. Nikki, do you have anything? I want to thank the insurance committee for making the best decision for the employees. I'm looking out there and seeing how upset because they put hours into what was in the best interest and this board has disregarded their recommendation and I am absolutely 100% disappointed that they have not looked at the big picture on this and I can't believe that they would not listen to a committee. It is absolutely devastating to health care in this county right now. I guarantee you. It might be good for one year, but if you look at all the absolute status, the data, there is no denying the fact that we are going to pay so much more by going out to bid. Yep. I mean, it is exhausting to me because I know how hard I worked for this for the last four years. And I know how much it costs the employees, and these are hard decisions, but this decision that you voted for today is going to cost health care absolute through the roof, and there is no denying it. You ask any health care provider, and you look at the numbers, and you look at our data, 89% loss ratio is huge, and you're going to the market <coughs> to bid on that and not using a veil to help get our things under control. It's detrimental, and I, I'm... I can't even tell you how disappointed I am in this board to not look at the picture and take the time to do what's in the best interest of this employees. Absolutely devastated. Ms. Jorgensen? I have to echo what Nikki said. Um, and once we go out to bed and then change or whatever, then we're stuck. We are. We're going to be stuck. It's going to cost the employees a lot more. And we, we're we stuck. That's the end of it. We're we stuck. And And Unfortunately, I think that some of the board members don't understand the insurance business enough to understand what we're saying, Nikki. I just think that. I think we've all done our research, though. But I'm not going to argue. I yeah, think, I'm I think not going to argue. I just want you to know that. We're all entitled to our opinion. Lightly. Well, I know. <coughs> and who's to say United yeah. may come back? in the bid process the and show. even lower it. We've so. been through this in the committee. Ask one of the members right now, Sandy, if you don't believe me, ask a member. We've you discussed need this. You need to calm down. We've discussed let's, let's, You need to calm down. Okay, my board report is. Um, Can I go? Oh, I listened to yours. You no, won't. she wanted her well, report. She means oh, give her report. I thought, I thought that was your board report. report. Well, no, I started. I'm sorry. What <laughs> I'm Joe sorry. Theobald did today was wonderful. I loved it. But did everybody get the email from FSBA? I saw it. Yes. The I kid. would like to look into that. I'd be willing to click on all the clicks and see and get the kit and come back to the board with the information. But at the at Florida School Board Association has a whole PR kit we can use to honor all the people, all of them, these guys and mm. anybody else, and they have a whole PR kit we can use to honor the people that helped during the storm, employees and community mm. members. So uh, if, if it's okay with the board, I'd like to I the information you, and you, and bring In your back. email, you said that you were going to ask Debbie to assist you. I think I read that. Well, I said email. I'd chair a committee, but only if Debbie Decky Bells work with me. Is that okay, Superintendent? Sure. Would Debbie, work yeah, with me? Debbie's okay with that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Debbie's really good. <laughs> Sorry Up to, to put you on the spot, but it's true. Debbie's wonderful okay. with putting things, you know. See, I read your emails. I, I know you think you I don't. You don't answer your phone or read my texts, though. That's why you wait for workshops. <laughs> Sorry. I had to put that in. Okay, and then um, in the minutes from the September, September 19th meeting I asked for a workshop and I understand that we had this come up and all that but I'd like again to request a workshop for quote general conversation and team building between the board and the superintendent in the sunshine all six of us at the same time and you know one thing was what goes on the consent agenda nothing that yeah. our 
our okay. employees financially, just things like that, sure. just general. So I really would like to schedule that, please, if we could. Sharon, will you schedule that? When, uh, when is there a two o'clock before the next meeting? October 17th, two o'clock. That's fine. Perfect. Okay. Thank you and very I, much. I'm hearing too. I'll be there. I didn't okay. mean to. Two o'clock now. I thought you were doing that. No, I wasn't. That wasn't even on my list. It's just after I heard Nick. Okay. Maybe I got upset too. Okay. Um, just briefly, the first thing I wanted to say is um, I think we made the best decision possible for um, what we did with the Campbell building. I've heard a lot of, a lot of positive comments out in the community. Um, and I, I look forward to some great things happening with the Campbell Building. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is that we had a ball being in the parade. David drove us in a big candy apple red shiny truck that um, St. John, uh, Beck Chevrolet donated, right? Yes. Um, Lent us. For us to, yeah, lend us to, uh, yeah, you know, uh, and I'm sure he'll do that again for us for the Palatka High School parade. Oh, I'm sure. The 20th. Friday night, Palatka High School has an open date, but there's going to be the game of the century played uh, at the Bennett Cooper Field at Veterans Memorial Stadium, uh, a powder puff football game. Miss Gilliard will be calling the game, uh, and if you've never heard her call a game, it's the best thing going. She needs to be on the radio. And um, myself and J.T. Stout, principal of Palatka High School, will be refereeing the game. I'm going to have a striped shirt and a whistle, so I'm very excited. So if you don't have anything to do Friday night, come out and support the kids at Palatka High School. And that's all I have, Mr. Douglas. I had a, a board member uh, ask me about uh, a workshop for um, trespassing. So if uh, it's the pleasure of the board to um, do that, I'd be happy to prepare a, uh, a legal presentation about the parameters for that. Um, and then otherwise, um, everything is uh, well in the legal department. Good. Thank you, Dr. Serency. Yeah, I want to take just a minute. And, um, you know, we talk this time of the year, throughout the year, we have different um, causes that we bring to our public's attention uh different awareness months if you will and i know we've um you know this time of year we talk about down syndrome awareness uh breast cancer awareness which you see the nfl players uh working on that uh domestic violence awareness month i want to bring one up that's um probably you probably haven't heard of and that's kind of near and dear to my heart and that is Rett's syndrome month and uh, RETS is spelled R-E-T-T-S. If you get a chance, you can Google that. Um, but I have a personal connection with that. My two and a half year old granddaughter has been diagnosed with RETS syndrome. And the reason I bring that up is this is, October is RETS syndrome awareness month. And I wanna make the public aware that that is a um, significant disease that's affecting um, females and um, it only affects females. Males that are born with that normally do not survive. And this is a degenerative disease that is a, it's really a gene mutation, if you will. But um, they're born normal, but they continue to regress. And, um, you know, my, my granddaughter is going to be, cannot talk, will continue to lose function with her body. And I say that because, um, they are researching that now. A lot of research is going on, and I understand they are real close to trying to find the cure for that. So what I'd like you to do is just be aware of that and uh, understand that um, there is a way you can help out with that. Uh, my daughter is actually selling T-shirts to uh, raise money for research. And there is a Facebook page. It's called Caring for Carson. Carson is my granddaughter, and it's spelled K-A-R-S-Y-N. She's also the daughter of Mr. Brian Helms, who's principal at Interlochen High School. So uh, I just say that because it's a very rare disease. It affects um, a number of people in Florida, it's just a handful of cases in Florida. But I just want to bring that to your attention while I have the mic, and uh, strictly because I want to do what, what we can to help these children who are, have been uh, Absolutely. given this disease. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Rick. Is that all? That's it. Thank you. Okay. If there's nothing else, our meeting is adjourned.